What's going on you guys? So it's finally here. We have expansion for PlayStation 5, at least the beta version. So PlayStation sent out some emails, I think it was about a couple days ago, about the new M2 SSD expansion slots and how they're going to activate it with their next update. So I'm a part of the beta tested program. So I'm just going to be testing out this new and highly anticipated feature. So lots of us out there don't really care too much about storage. We've learned how to maintain it, manage it. While some of us don't even play that much games, so we don't need that much storage. But for those of you guys out there that care a lot about storage and having most of your games on the console at the same time, this news is great news for you. In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and install an M2 SSD. One terabyte storage is what it's going to be. So I've got here with me Samsung's 980 Pro. So this is a M2 SSD drive. So PCIe 4.0, so fourth generation NVMe drive. The link to this will be down in the description. I'll tell you guys right now, this is only a beta tested program. So they're going to release a fuller version of the update that everyone is gonna have access to. There's a lot more things that came with the update, but this is the most important part, installing the M2 SSD. Let's be honest, we all want this one. This is one we've been waiting for for a while. There's a few specifications that you're going to have to take note of when getting an M2 SSD. So far, at least with the ones that they've already given us, these drives are not common out there, but there's quite a few that you can pick up at the moment if you're going to be, you know, testing with the beta program. PlayStation is not giving any guarantees to those of us that's, you know, testing this out right now. That's the point of a beta test, but I'm here to test this out for you guys to see how it works. So this does not come with a heat sink. That's one of the most important things that you're going to have to take note of when getting your M2 SSD. It's the fact that you need to have one that has inbuilt heat sink or you have to install the heat sink inside. This Samsung 980 Pro does not have inbuilt heat sink. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this external heat sink. These things don't cost that much. I think this cost me about $14.99. I'm talking Canadian dollars, by the way. This Samsung 980 Pro is also not too expensive, but depends on your budget and how you see it. But I think it is still expensive. You know, SSD drives are not cheap as opposed to HDD drives. So if you don't really care too much about storage, I'd say just skip on all this nonsense. You just use whatever storage you've got on the PlayStation 5 or use an external HDD drive to store your PS4 games or PS5 games and then just keep whatever games you want on the console. There's a few SSDs out there that have inbuilt heat sink that are compatible with the PS5, you know, based on this new beta update. So you can go ahead and check down in the description. I'll have a list to a few of them that you guys can check out. So I haven't tested them all out. I'm just waiting till the final drop, you know, the final update so I can see every single thing that's required out of these SSDs. But I'm gonna test this one out. I've made sure that this has all the specs that the PlayStation 5 needs for it to run games off of it. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly run through the M2 SSD requirements you're going to need to take note of when getting one of these drives. So just make sure that you confirm that every drive that you're looking into has these specs, at least for the beta update. First of all, you wanna make sure that the interface is a PCIe Generation 4 M2 NVMe SSD. Next up, the capacity has to be between 250 gigabytes and four terabytes. The cooling structure, so it requires inbuilt heatsink or external heatsink. Next is the sequential read speed. This has to be about 5,500 megabytes per second or faster. Go ahead and look down in the description. I'm going to have a link that leads to all the specs that you need to go ahead and look into when picking up an SSD drive for your PS5. So let's go ahead and open up the PS5 and install this. It's a quick and painless process, takes no time at all. There's already a slot that's been made for expansion of storage. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. But before I go ahead and open up the PS5, first thing I'm gonna do is install the heat sink on the drive. Right after I'm done installing, I'm gonna slide it into the PlayStation 5 and then we're gonna test out and see if we have more storage. So one terabyte is what I'm adding. Okay, so right here, as you can see, I've got a few things. I've got PlayStation 5, which I'm gonna move out of the way for now. And then I've got a few more things here. So this is the heat sink, the external heat sink. This is the Samsung 980 Pro. This is the actual storage we're going to be installing. And then I've got a regular screwdriver and uh, my blade right here. The last thing I've got here is my Phillips screwdriver. So this is all I'm going to need, at least I hope so. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna quickly do is install this heat sink on this drive right here. And that's the drive right there. It's really small, nothing crazy as you can see. Make sure you're careful with this little thing right here. You don't wanna damage it. So make sure while working with it, you're being careful. Okay, so installation of the heat sink on this drive is quite simple. It's nothing crazy. 
Uh, the heat sink usually comes with, or at least this one, which is just, uh, I think it's a one-sided one. If it's two-sided, then you get a second side to it. But I only got the one-sided one. You want to apply this thermal pad so it's sticky. So you apply one end to the flat end of the micro connectors. So just apply it right there. So make sure you try to align it as best as you can. Once you have the thermal pad aligned and attached to the heat sink, you want to take off the second side. So basically all that's left now is to attach this heat sink to this right here, our M2 SSD. So what I'm gonna do is attach it, make sure that the screw holes are aligned properly to the one on the thermal pad. So the thermal pad is gonna have one, just align them properly. And also it makes sure that the, the connector on the other end is exposed. So that's very important right there. Once you have that attached, you wanna secure it even more with the two provided silicone rings. So just wrap them up around and let them hold both together. So that's what I'm gonna do right here, right quickly. Okay, we've got one secured tightly, now we're gonna get the second one. This is a simple setup right here, pretty easy. We're going to test it out and see how well this works with the PS5 console. We're gonna bust open the PS5 right now and go ahead and install this inside of it. Okay, so I've got the console right here. First thing I'm gonna do is take off the back end, as you can see right there. It shouldn't take any more any time. If you have yours mounted horizontally, I don't think you're gonna have to deal with this. Okay, now that we've got that off, we're going to lay this flat on its side and we're gonna pop open the back side. So to do that, we're gonna push on one end and just kind of pop it open right there. So just push on one end and kind of plop it open right there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and open up the little compartment, which is this one that holds the external SSD. Turns out my original Phillips is not going to work, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one right here, which just has a smaller crosshead. So it's still, it's still basically a Phillips, just smaller, so it's gonna fit into that little screwdriver right there, or a little screw. So I'm gonna take that off, and then we're going to plop our uh, new SSD with the heat sink into it. Get that connector in there diagonally. That's how you wanna get it in, and just align it with the screw hole right there. Make sure that whatever you're getting fits properly into this little you know, compartment. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the screw on this end, so it's labeled 110. The same screw head you use to take off the original compartment screw is what you're going to use to take this one off as well. So it comes with a washer as well and we're just going to use that to screw on our new SSD in there. So we're going to move it from the 110 to I think it's an 80 that it's numbered. That should help keep the new SSD inside the PlayStation 5, so the little, the little compartment. So you want it to be sturdy. Once you have that in there, we should be pretty much good there. And now we're going to cover up that pull, that little compartment and screw it back on. I actually think it's a pretty quick and easy process. So if you have multiple drives or multiple SSDs, it's gonna be quite easy to switch between them. But I'll just say go for a four terabytes if you're somebody that you know enjoys having a lot of space on their console. I think they cost about $1,000, which honestly is pricey. But if you really care about it, and you can go ahead and grab it. There's going to be links down in the description to every single thing I'm talking about, by the way. Quite easy, just plop it back on the same way you took it back off. Right there, okay, we're gonna get the back end on as well. I'm gonna screw that on quite quickly here. Can't wait to see how this looks when tested. Actually, I wanna see, because I've been looking forward to this one for a while, this little expansion or storage uh, upgrade. So this will be cool to see how it works, or right? if it works. I think it'll work. I trust in it right now. To be honest, I feel like beta testing is like, they're close to being perfect, but they're just like trying to work out some kinks. And I feel like some releases tend to be beta, even, even if they say it's a final release. It still feels like a beta. We've got this installed. Next thing I'm gonna do now is go plug this in and show you guys the new storage. First time turning it on, as you can see right there, it says to use your M2 SSD you need to format it. So when you format your M2 SSD, all data on it will be deleted. So I expect that to be the case, of course, with just about anything. I'm gonna go ahead and format the M2 SSD and we're gonna see how it works. So format, and then it's gonna clean it up for us and we're gonna go from there. So in the description of this drive, it says it gets up to about 7,000 megabits per second for the read speed. But according to the PlayStation 5, we're getting 5557.531 megabits per second. And according to what they wanted, what the specs were that were needed for M2 SSDs, this crosses that mark. We need a 5500 if you don't remember. Here's a quick warning right there. If you experience problems while playing a game installed in M2 SSD storage, try installing it in console storage. So like they said earlier, this is a beta test, so they're not expecting everything to work out perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, and we're gonna go from there. 
Okay, now we've got external storage, extra storage, expanded storage. So as you can see, I've got the system beta installed as well. It shows it right there. I'm probably gonna have to upgrade from there. There's a few more things they've added, as you can see. It now tells you what kind of game you're playing, if it's a PS4 or PS5 game, as you can see right there, right next to the game. So PS5, NBA 2K21, PS4, GTA, Grand Theft Auto. All right, let's try and see if we can move a game onto external storage or a new external storage or M2 SSD and try to play off of it. And to do that, we're gonna go into settings, and then we're gonna go into storage. And as you can see, we've got three different sources now. Our M2 SSD is now in here. One terabyte Samsung 980 Pro. Since I want the transfer to be faster, I'm gonna move between SSD. So the console storage and my new SSD. So console storage right there. I'm gonna go into games and apps, and then I'm gonna move from there. Let's see what we got, that's PS5. We want a PS5 game, absolutely. I'm gonna move Spider-Man Miles Morales is one of the most you know, easy to test out games out there. Let's move that. So select items to move. And we're gonna move it to M2 SSD storage. See, right there. So the item you selected will be moved to M2 SSD storage. So let's do that. First thing I've noticed is the fact that it's faster moving between the SSD on board the PS5 and the external SSD we've just added, as opposed to moving to USB external storage, at least when moving between HDD drive and the console storage SSD. Let's see what we've got inside the M2 SSD, and then we're gonna go try to play the game off of the M2 SSD. So games and apps, we've got Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Okay, so there's a game right there, as you can see. So this is on the M2 external storage, as I just showed you guys. And it's not telling me to move it before I play it. So I can play it automatically off of the drive. So let's see how it looks. So far from what I can see, it's working smoothly. We need some more time. We need to test it out longer and see how this, you know, beta program is going to work. We're now at the home page for the game, PS5 game. I've already played this game multiple times, so I'm just gonna open up one of my save files and try to play at 30 frames and 60 frames. Okay, so this right now I think is at 60 frames. Let's go ahead and see what our settings look like. Uh, we're gonna go into visual performance RT, so 60 frames per second as you guys can see. And then I'm gonna hit circle right there and try to play. Let's see how this works. Well, would you look at that? We've got external storage, y'all. Look at this, man. I got extra one terabyte installed right now and I'm playing off of it. Something we've been waiting for for quite a while. Not everybody really cares about this. Man, I ain't played this game in a long time. I can't even play it like I used to anymore. I think I always play it. My difficulty is quite hard as well, so I don't play easy. You know, these guys don't play no games around here. As you can see, 60 frames is pretty good, pretty smooth, no issues at all. I'm gonna go ahead and see what it looks like at 30 frames. So just fidelity mode. The complaints about storage is now a thing of the past, at least based on this so far. I'm not saying that it's 100%. I haven't noticed any issues yet, but who knows what might come up. It's a, it's a beta test after all. But they're going to release the real one or the full version of this update I'm expecting within a week to three weeks, somewhere within that time frame. Hopefully nothing really changes regarding the specs required for the M2 slots, because this is working perfectly right now. I see no issues and I would really like to keep using this. I've got one more thing to show you guys so I'm gonna show you guys how to install games directly from the store the PlayStation Store onto your new M2 SSD so if you don't want to go in directly to the onboard storage of the PS5 what you want to do is go to your settings right here storage and then installation location so right here is where you want to get to so set the default installation location for apps and games so PS5 games and apps I can go ahead and change this to M2 SSD storage right there and the same thing I can do for PS4 so you can choose where you want stuff to go and I'm just gonna go ahead and choose M2 SSD storage for now if everything remains the same after PlayStation drops the full update then go ahead and pick up one of these drives so you can pick up the drive separate without the built-in heatsink or you can go ahead and pick one up with the built-in heatsink so if you pick up one without then go ahead and pick up a separate heatsink and install it like I did quick and painless so easy just make sure you get a low profile one that's going to fit perfectly with the drive into the slot for the SSD storage. It's about 1.7 now this console has because I've added one terabyte to the original, I think about 650 or whatever it was. And I'm just gonna put PS4 games on external storage, the HDD, or I can just put it all on the console now and not have to use external storage. It's up to me how I wanna use this now. So you guys go crazy with this. There's a few more things they've added, but I'm not gonna talk about this update or this beta update until after they release the full version. Cause what if they change some things and I, you know, I don't really wanna talk about things that might get changed, but I think everything is going Going to remain the same with the SSD. If anything, they, they might add some more options, you know, for you to be able to use. If you guys found this video enjoyable or helpful, make sure to spam that like button, run it up on this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. I really appreciate it. It's your boy Midas, and I'm out of here.